Hi, Greg Lewis, Metastock Software. Hey, you're about to watch one of the great presentations from our recent online trader summit. I know you're going to enjoy it. If you do not yet have Metastock, make sure you visit metastock.com slash traders dash summit three for one for a great three for one offer for Metastock plus market data. Also, make sure to listen to Jeff Gibby at the end of today's presentation. He has a really great offer. It's very exciting and I know you're gonna uh, wanna hear it. Uh, finally, make sure to leave us some feedback. We always wanna hear your feedback and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you so much and successful trading. And then moving uh, right along, Ken and I were, were uh, trying to get his audio connected. The good news is, <laughs> is we got his audio working. So uh, we can take a brief, uh, while Jim was finishing up, I was glad he answered a few questions because we got him on here. Uh, Ken has a really interesting visual approach to the markets. He runs a company called Day Trading University. And... Um, we're going to start him right on time today. So, uh, Ken, let's go ahead and see if we can hear you. Hey, traders. Welcome aboard. I'm Ken Calhoun. Actually, my company is now TradeMastery.com. I used to run Day Trading University, and I'm not doing anything on the IRS. Uh, that's what I got a CPA for. But, uh, yeah, so I just wanted to say a special shout-out to Jeff and to all the traders. Can you folks hear me now? And can you see my razor-sharp Metastock charts? Uh, They're coming through. Okay. They look great. All right. Well, hey, let's get underway with today's event. Looking forward to working with all of you. And uh, on behalf of my, me and my team here at TradeMastery.com, I wanted to thank the team at Metastock and also the folks at Stocks and Commodities for having me here to talk about how to trade momentum gaps and breakouts using your Metastock charts. I'm Ken Calhoun, your host, president of the original Day Trading University and Trade Mastery. As always, all information is for educational use only, uh, you know, not, I'm not making buy or sell recommendations. It's all for learning purposes only. So this is what we're going to look at today is the best moving swing trading breakout charts on our Metastock charts, how to avoid false breakouts with the use of volume and candlestick patterns, how to set your entries for trading gap continuations and multi-day trades, how to time your exits to lock in profits, and how to do what I call acceleration ramp breakouts. Now, I've traded as much as $5 million with P&L and tax return proof, I'll show you in a second, in a single year. So you might, I'm in the category of what you might call a hyperactive day and swing trader. And as Jeff alluded, I use a very visual price action based strategy in setting up trades. And there's a lot of things I'll be teaching you today that you've not learned anywhere else before. One thing I wanted to ask is feel free to ask questions. Uh, don't ask me to pull up charts that I'm not covering today because I don't have time for that. But if you have any questions about any of the strategies, feel free to ask and I will answer those for you. So I'm here for you guys and I wanted to thank all of you from around the world for joining us in today's event. You may have seen me in CBS Market Watch Money Show. I'm a Money Show regular speaker at the Traders Expos, the streets, stocks and commodities. I'm a former corporate quality engineer and statistician for the Ford Motor Company. And I live here in Colorado, USA, so, uh, and I wanted to, speaking of stocks and commodities, I was really pleased, I was tickled pink, I was showing my daughter this, I'm the only author in the entire world who had two of his articles voted the top five in the entire uh, year for stocks and commodities 2017, so uh, thanks to all of you who voted for my articles, I appreciate it, I'm two of the top five for the whole year, so highly recommend Stocks and Commodities Magazine, I do a monthly trading on momentum column there, and uh, I'm certainly pleased to be able to be involved with that uh, top trading industry magazine. Let me ask you guys a quick question before we jump into the chart patterns. That's all nice and fine, but that's only half the strategy. When it comes to making money as a trader, I think it's important to learn from people that actually prove they really trade with, you know, like tax return proof, I think helps. How many of you, show of hands, type in the letter yes or Y, agree that it would kind of be a good thing to learn trading from people that actually prove they are traders and not just chart talkers? Talk is cheap. Anyone can talk about charts. Kind of like watching financial news TV. Booyah! Well, I mean, that's kind of fun but and entertaining. But the point is you want to learn how to make money, right? And so learning from people who combine and test and prove that they're actually are real money traders, I think, is important. So thanks. A lot of hey yeses. All right. Thanks, traders. Appreciate it. 
you know, I'm a real money trader. I don't know how many educators show tax return proof that they're real traders, but I do. Uh, and I highly recommend that you do get the help of somebody who knows how to do their, the accounting for taxes as part of your filing, because it's really complicated. I would never want to tackle it on my own. But anyway, I've done as much as 4.9 million in actual trades in a single year, and that's my uh, 1099 proof from IB. So uh, anyway, you may see me at the Traders Expos all over the world. It's kind of fun. Do your trading losses ever make you or your family say, don't? How many of you? You may have a problem trading if you conceal, if you hide your trading losses from your significant other. That's probably a sign that things aren't going the way you want them to. So hopefully I can help turn that around for you guys and you don't keep looking like this at the end of each week when you say, how much did I lose trading? Gaps and momentum breakouts. I only have like three more slides and we're going to jump into charts, all right? I'm a trader. I can't stand looking at PowerPoints too long or else my... Uh, my eye starts to twitch. i got to look at real charts. But anyway, strongest day in swing trading charts. We like to look at minor gaps, small gaps that continue in trend. We've got some really good examples today for you. What I call acceleration ramps. That's kind of where you have a steady uptrend that then hockey sticks into a 45-degree angle breakout. We're going to look at some examples of that pattern. And finally, entries following wide candle days. These are institutional accumulation days. And it's a really good, kind of like a poker tell for your trades. It tells you something good's going on. So let's take a look at charts, eh? We're going to start off with the DXCM. And this one's a real firecracker of a chart. Kind of zoom in here just a little bit. Going to zoom into our most recent price action. One of the most important things that you will learn from me in today's event is that the chart pattern is important, but you guys probably pay far too little attention to the range or the point range on the right side of the chart. And to me, that's as important as the directional continuity of the chart. This is a great example of a breakout chart. It's gone from a base of 42 to 75. It's got a 30-point range over the last several months. So if we kind of zoom in a little tighter here, so you can see just why this chart's so nice. You can see the range here lately, roughly 50 to 75. So it's got a 25-point range. Now, this is what I mean when I call a signal candle or a wide-range candle. This is the first tip that I would share with you. Okay, this is a good kind of a rider downer is when you see, and I've taught traders this pattern for years, other people have <clears throat> borrowed it, but when you see a large candle at the right side of a bullish cup or congestion box, often that leads to a new breakout to new highs. And even if you miss the first time there's a big green candle, a good momentum stock will often have a second or third large green candle or a small gap or some other tell that institutional volumes underway and it makes perfect sense to trade following I will add say fit the writer downer is usually add 50 cents to the high of the candle to avoid a false breakout and that makes for a good entry signal for your pattern so look be on the lookout this is the first tip is always be on the lookout kind of like a market detective I'm a big fan of detective shows like Murdoch mysteries and others anyway you got large green candles that tells you institutional buyers are in charge so you buy above the high of that candle you can often use those for position sizing, as my colleague Van Tharp would call it, or scaling, where you're adding to winning trades one after another. So if you have a large green candle, trade one might be there, you let it ride, trade two would be on a subsequent move, and it's off to the race as we go. Okay. A quick tip, by the way, where do you trail stops? I'm going to do some interactive Q&A with you guys, but the drop dead stop I usually, you may have seen in my stocks and commodities articles, I'll usually use two or three points, but this one's a little pricey up at $70 a share. Your maximum stop on any swing trading chart should be a loss of an aggregate two days of price action low. So if it loses two days of support, that's the price that proves the trade in trouble, and you should go back to cash. So that's another rider downer. I want to pack millions of dollars worth of real money trade examples into bullet points for you guys if that helps i'm not a big fan of squiggly line crossovers and you know magic signals and ooh, this line is doing this and so that makes me a winning trader Derp. nope it's not about that it's much more about range vol directional volatility and risk management like my colleague tom sosnov says trade wide not trade small trade often and i say trade wide not deep and those are both good sentiments you want to trade a number of instruments with good directional volatility that makes sense so we're going to do some quizzes here because I want to teach you some good strategies and but also make it interactive. I used to be a former corporate trainer for big companies like Ford, Rockwell, uh, Sheraton, Boeing, and the rest of it. So I've got a former, former corporate training and development background. So 
I like to make things a little interactive. So here's a gap up that continues up, and so I'm going to start doing that in today's presentation. Gaps will usually continue. The good thing about gap continuations is often, even if it does a parabolic curve, it'll often find support at previous support. And this is Seagate, right? The hard drive manufacturer. So even if you saw a gap up and you bought somewhere following the gap, you start to sweat it, the maximum stop loss on a gap chart like this would be a loss of the gap or the window in candlestick parlance, the, the window high. So that would be a good pattern there to look for. Another quick tip is that it's a good idea to, thanks, Zona Learn. It's a good tip to uh, not buy the day after a gap. Right? And yes, Scott, I still use the ADX, so I'm not going to be going over it today. The average directional index is a good indicator. One of the things you look for, uh, a quick another writer downer for gaps is you usually, I, need, I will seldom trade the day of the gap unless I'm day trading it. That's a whole other thing. But for swing trades, I will virtually never trade the day after the gap because often that's a resting day or consolidation or a 50% retracement mean reversion day. So don't trade the day or even two after the gap, you know. Wait until, say, 50 cents or so above the high of the gap day before getting in. And then if it loses support or has, say, in this case, a gravestone doji, or if you start to see a reversal and it loses a couple of points of range, you may want to get back out of the trade. You can always rebuy the pivot on a bounce and then scale in on a breakout continuation. <clears throat> One thing that I urge you... It took me so many years to learn this. This is very heartfelt. If, I, if my life depended on me helping you guys make a lot of money uh, as traders, this would be one of the core things if we were all in a big room together, is make sure that you pay at least as much attention to the range to qualify a chart, you know, the point range to qualify a chart as you do the underlying chart pattern. For example, if this is a chart that had a range where, say, this was, say, I don't know, $36 a share, and this high was only, say, $40 a share, you know, or $38 a share, or some very low point range, it would not be nearly as interesting to me as a professional trader because the profit potential isn't there. But because the range on the Seagate chart is a low of 36 to a high of 61, well, now we're talking. It's almost a doubler, right? 36 to 61, well, 24 points, that's a lot of range. Another quick writer downer is look for around 50% of the range is your exit target. So if we have a range on this chart of, say, 36 to, let's say, what's the support line on this? Say 36 to 61 or so, oh, we got, say, 20, 25 points of range. Half of that on the top on a breakout would be the entry signal. Now, how do you set entry signals on charts like this? <coughs> Very carefully. I'm glad you asked. Well. In general, as I publish in Stocks and Commodities, I will usually add 50 cents to the nearest whole number high. I never buy anything with a 9 in it because, as this chart illustrates, 9s look kind of rich to the crowd. 9s are selling targets, as I've taught so many institutional traders who used to come see my live seminars in Vegas and New York and Dallas and California and all the rest of it. Uh, you want to sell into 9s. That's another rider downer. So if you buy, say, 51.52, you sell 58, 59 because things will often stall out right near the decade value, the multiple of 10 value. So never ever for the rest of your life, you have my word on this important, never ever buy, buy or purchase anything with a nine in it. I've taught tens of thousands of traders to sell the nine. You could see my article on that topic in Stocks and Commodities too. And it's a very valid approach because it's a price action market psychology technique. So anyway, if 61 is our resistance area, again, not a trade recommendation, but look how well it'll work out in the upcoming weeks ahead. The uh, point is, if 60, if it does come back to life, if 61 is our resistance whole number, and we add 50 cents or so above that to hopefully avoid a false breakout, where would be your first entry? And for the A students, the sharp pencils in the bunch, if I scale in every two points, where would be my second entry? So. You didn't think you'd have to actually think and, and work, right? But I used to teach MBA courses as adjunct faculty, too, as well as being a corporate trainer. So I like to get you guys engaged. So 61 is the resistance. And we add 50 cents before we enter the, for the first trade. And then we scale in every two points. Where would be the first and the second entry? Who can tell me? I'm hearing some crickets. OK, well. Let me give you the answer. I like to have a little levity, right? It's kind of fun. 
Sixty-one fifty would be entry one. Yeah, we're traders. They're not going to sit here for ten minutes waiting. Sixty-one fifty is trade one. Sixty-three fifty would be trade two for scaling. It's absolutely vital that you look at all your trades as just the planting a seed on small share size. I might only go and say fifty shares there. I'm not going to do a five hundred or thousand share trade. I'm going to do fifty shares, and then add another fifty shares two points up, and then it gets interesting. Then I can martingale up at hundred share increments. So do look to position size or scale into your charts as you're looking for entry signals. Let's move on to another chart, BOFI. This illustrates one principle that's especially valuable for, you know, for experienced trading is trade instruments that it would be really hard to screw up and lose money. That's kind of like, it's a good technical term. It would be hard to screw up and lose money. I'm glad you told me that, kid. Now I know how to trade. Thank you very much. I like to have some humor. I'm a funny guy and a professional. The point is tight, clean chart patterns that have really tight, well-managed. You could have thrown a dart at this and come out smelling like a rose, unless maybe you bought here and panicked out here. That would be the only bad trade in the whole chart. But uh, you could have scaled in. You could have bought into this chart week after week, month after month, and done very well. The range on this guy is 24 to 42, which is great, right? We've got nearly 20 points of range. So another point, a rider downer is give preference to charts that have directional volatility uptrends in tight trading channels that are clean and well-defined uh, and relatively easy to trade. If they do start to pull back off their highs, then we don't want to buy it yet, right? We want to look for new breakout above resistance. Another warning sign, by the way, and this chart illustrates it perfectly, although not a classic candlestick pattern, is to look for a sequence of two in a row red candles. That's a warning, Will Rogers, danger. For those of you who remember the classic loss in space, we have two red candles, a loss of support of two red candles is also a good trailing stopper stop out strategy to use because oftentimes if you see two red days in a row that tells you troubles in paradise and you're likely to lead to new lows which is exactly what happened in this chart BOFI so this illustrates two good patterns one is entry uh, the signal with a relatively strong pattern clean tight range on the way up and the other is when to get out of dodge and that's when you got two red candles in a row and a loss of support under those makes for a exit target the money you make as a trader is a lot more dependent on spraying out numbers, a number of different charts, playing five or six charts at a time and not trying to go deep on any one chart. Where I screwed up as a trader in the 90s was I'd find a magic chart pattern because I didn't know any better. I thought magic chart patterns are how to trade. It's not. It's a lot more about directional volatility, range, number of occurrences, risk management. Uh, and position sizing is a lot more of the math and the mechanics of professional trading than is simply looking at chart patterns. And that's why so many people lose as traders is because you probably went down the path I did was you follow some guru as a magic chart signal and, oh, and you kind of start doing five, much heavier leverage trades like three or five hundred or a thousand shares or go margin or something because it has the perfect setup and it doesn't work out. You know, I don't care if I get half my trades right. I care about, do I make money? Okay, You can quote me on that. I'm a professional trader. That's what I do. Uh, the wrong question to ask is, what percent of winners do you take? Uh, the right question to ask is, how much money are you making net? Okay? I mean, that just, that's just me. I'm a business, so I'm looking to make money as a trader. Something that leads me to what I call a 30% rule. And that's where, you know, out of... You need to figure out how to make money as a trader, even if only one out of three of your trades is successfully in the money from the get-go. The only answer for that is small stops uh, and adding or s position sizing or scaling into the winners. And that's every couple of points. You feed the winners and starve the losers as a professional trader. You have my word on that. It's very important you understand that. So let's say you see a hammer. It's hammer time. Ba 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 da. All right, we're off to the races. So that's the first pivot. Now I'm not a pivot trader, though. If you were 50 cents above the high, we'd get you in on this candle. That's good that you can start the trade off, but we've got the gap. Then we've got the day after the gap, which is the do nothing day. The Dudley do nothing day after the gap day. So we don't trade there. We What you do is on these charts, again, it's so easy. Just it's one thing I like, the Metastock charts are so cool because they're so crystal clear and sharp and easy to use, right? It tells you a visual story with stunning clarity of exactly how to trade. And so anyway, Hats off to, to Metastock. Always working on moving the bar further and uh, making some of the world's best charts out there. Anyway, the point is, so we got a high here. You add 50 cents to the high of that. So maybe we're in a 27. And it's kind of bumbling around. Now, 
what would be the next trade for the let's say we bought 27 50 cents above this and by the way I always use buy stop limit orders that's what I do in my Ameritrade my interactive brokers and my fidelity SEP buy stop limit orders so I'd say put a buy stop 27 limit 2750 maybe 27 uh, 28 rather so use buy stop limit orders always use limit orders when you enter positions never use market orders unless you're in a panic to get out you should never be in a panic to get out but anyway let's say we bought 27 for the first trade and it's kind of in the money we had a little sleepless night there but it came back to life and we're still good if we got in at the 27 the maximum initial stop would be say 26 because that's the reason I got in the trade right if it broke resistance here I wouldn't get back out at this guy who flips back down under 26 so let's say I buy the 27 now what would you not buy over here this is where so many traders to avoid false breakouts you need to know these kind of rules and they illustrate themselves perfectly in these charts we do not buy nines right we do not buy nines so the next entry signal I would use would be way up at 30.50 so trade one might be 27, trade two would be up at 35 because I know that 29 is a low odds, high risk area to enter. So uh, it may well do a false breakout if it breaks 29 and goes up here, bumps its head against 30 and turns tail and comes back down. I don't want to be the guy who buys the trade here and gets stopped out. So you add 50 cents to whatever technical price action trigger you're looking at. In this case, 30.5 would make sense. And again, this is a good example of a gap continuation. You'll, you'll see these patterns illustrated over and over again. You've got a gap, you've got a quiet day, a resting day after the gap, it goes into sideways consolidation. You don't want to miss out on the run because you're too impatient and wanting to see what it does the day of the gap or the day after the gap. Smart traders, we bide our time. We just put in buy stop limit orders so that way you get a fill and you're up in the money. And then the, where the magic happens is where you scale in or add to it. Oh, thanks traders, I appreciate that. All right, let's see. That's ETSY. Next up, we'll look at FTNT. <coughs> One thing that I hope that you get out of late, and I'll speed up the pace because in the interest of time, uh, what I want you to get out of these charts is, number one, the directional trend strength. These are outstanding charts. It would have been hard to lose money with these charts. That's why I trade these kind of charts, because they can make me money. I care about one thing when it comes to trading making money. I mean, I'm very upfront about it. I care about the money. Show me the money. On the count of three, let's have some fun this afternoon, wherever you are in the world. You know, maybe make your, your wife uh, or husband or whatever say, what are you what are you talking about? Or, or your pet chihuahua go, Ruff. but on the count of three, wherever you are in the world, say, show me the money. One, two, three. Show me the money. And the crowd goes wild. Okay, we got a bearish engulfment over here, so that's not good. But what we like is that the fact that this thing has gone all the way from 38 up to 55. Again, that range is so important that you follow charts that have 15 or 20 points worth of range. That's a big key to success that is easily overlooked. And I hope that you'll, I sincerely hope that you'll take that to heart. Use that as part of your scanning evaluation criteria. There's no magic number, maybe minimum 10 points or so, or 10% or something like that, but at least 8, 10, 15, 20 points. You don't want to trade charts that have narrow compressed ranges. <coughs> That's FTNT. Let's jump into Twilio because this one's one of my favorite recent charts. You can see why if we zoom in just a little bit, just a little bit, you can see it's got a nice healthy gap continuation on the daily. And one thing to look at to give you a sense of the likelihood of a gap continuing is what's the behavior from a price action standpoint on the day or the two or the three after the gap. What do they do with that information? Do they say, do they reject it and price is rejected and it does a gap fill? That's rare. Usually somebody had a good reason for putting all that money into paying up out of market for this guy. And so the, in this one, the day after the gap got buyers. And the second day after the gap got buyers. And again, this is TWLO or Twilio. And for that reason, it makes uh, perfect sense for a long continuation. Okay, so you can see this guy, the high of day on the gap day looks to be around 32. So the long signal would be 32.50, whether you got in here or here. And it ran all the way up to 42.50, a 10 point run before starting to give it back. 
Okay, and we have a bearish engulfment here, so that's a bearish reversal sign. So for that reason, a loss of that support, that's kind of low, actually. Uh, but that would be the drop dead stop loss place. And by the way, it's fine. Don't beat yourself up if you, you know, say, because I've done, I've done it all the time. You know, let's say I buy 32.50 and I sell 35.50. I only got three points out of a 10 point run. That's fine. Or if you use, like I use a two point trailing stop, right? You know, that would get you out a bit better. But it's fine if you make a round trip here. You can always rebuy if it recovers new highs or continues its upwards march. There's a, don't beat yourself up as a trader if you don't get a huge chunk of the run. You know, it would be unrealistic, for example, to expect that you would get, say, this much of the run. That would be best case if you're lucky. But the other 99% of the time, you're going to get this, right? Kind of like the great movie Thor Ragnarok. Thor, great fire. Or Hulk, great fire. Thor, little stream of water. Well, it's kind of, kind of thing like that. You don't expect to see like a Hulk-like big, huge, epic run out of your trades. You want to get a piece of the action with a high percentage trade setup that's likely to continue. So look for the price action behavior uh, in the candles after a gap. If you see a gap up that continues to attract new buyers, that's good, especially if you have volume confirmation like we can see down here. Ask yourself, what's going on in volume the day, not only the day of the gap, which is always going to be a big volume day, but the day after the gap? Is it still holding steady? And it was. It was reasonably good volume. It wasn't back down to the previous trading range's volume. It was four, five, three, four times the volume on the continuation, on continuity. And that's what set this up for such a beautiful run up, is a nice minor gap continuation. That's my favorite signature play, is small gaps, or in candlestick parlance, we call them windows, but a small gap that continues to attract new buyers above each sequential whole number makes sense. And then get out when you see a reversal sign. Even if that means you only took a few points, it's better than a kick in the head, right? So be in the business of taking profits. Be obsessed about making money as a trader. Trading successfully, and I, you know, again, I'm a guy who, like I mentioned somewhere, for those of you just tuning in, or a studio home audience, I'm somebody who has traded as much as 4.9 million profitably in a single freaking year. All right? Who else? I didn't make a fortune on it. I only made 16 grand, but there was a ton of testing that I did for my traders. That's, I was testing the heck out of day and swing trading chart patterns to figure out the difference between what works and what doesn't. And continue to to this day. I'm still trading right now in VX, VXX and SDS and QID and some of the inverse plays on the market drop. But the point is, test and spend a lot more time on figuring out what makes for winning trades versus everything else. Uh, the math and the numbers are a lot more important than, than the trading education industry would have you believe. My kind of a, a disappointing thing that I realize is that a lot of the trading educators aren't even real traders. They're chart talkers, but they can't teach you the money side of it because they don't trade real money. All they do is become technical analysts and talk about chart patterns. And while that's academically interesting, I'm in it to learn how to make money. And so I had to self-teach myself with tons of work. The math, that's, you can quote me on this. I always say at my money show appearances and I published in Stocks and Commodities, the math is a lot more important than chart patterns. Anyway, back to these kind of charts. This is Nectar Therapeutics, okay, NKTR, really good chart. This is the first signal candle. Always be on the lookout for anything whether it's an uptrend, it doesn't have to be in a congestion zone or making a bullish cup. Anytime in a chart you see a big honking green candle in context of a pre-existing uptrend or a congestion or a bullish cup, anytime you see a large, significantly green candle, that tells you good things are likely, good, good eating is likely ahead, right? It's like the buffet is open and chow down. Okay, so can everybody see that? Now, there's no special... A lot of trading professionally is common sense and math and mechanics. It's not about magic chart patterns that make you a good trader. That's the big lie. The big truth is it's a lot more about the money management and scaling and position sizing and giving yourself multiple occurrences and directional volatility intelligently that makes for a successful trading approach. Visually, I'm looking, main, main thing I look at in charts is consistency of trend, how clean and tight the chart is, like this wonderful chart is, What's the point range? What's the volatility? This guy ran from 25 to 100 and freaking 10. That is a 90 point range. Did you see that? Aha. How much money could you have made if you bought in just 100 shares here? Or I don't know, 7,000, right? Or whatever. It's a, it's a huge run, right? So the point is, 
the range is so critically important. 25 to 110 is much better than 25 to 30. So always evaluate chart trading potential professionally based on the point range and give preference to those charts like this where everything lines up. You've got a nice, strong, clean, consistent breakout pattern. It's got a good directional bias. Uh, and notice, please, the complete absence of squiggly line crossovers. I'm not talking about MACDs and RSIs and stochastics and Elliott waves and Fibonacci fans and all that crap. All I care about is making money as a trader. And the way I do that and have done so uh, is to look for the strongest charts with the cleanest price action. They call these naked charts. Naked charts. Imagine that. Naked charts. There's got to be a joke in there somewhere, but I won't go there because this is a G-rated presentation. But the point is you got large green candles, okay? You've got large trading ranges and a directionally strong uptrend continuation. The money could have been made had you gotten in a time machine. I'm partial to TARDIS. I'm a big Doctor Who fan. But anyway, if I could have gotten back in a time and relative dimension and space vehicle and gone back in time, Schwang, look at that. That's a good technical term, Schwang. Anyway, cleanness of chart patterns, punctuated with either minor gaps or these large green signal candles, is a happy time for a trader. And we're blissfully free of needing a bunch of derivative squiggly line crossover hoo-ha, right? Trading does not need to be rocket science. It just needs to be a lot about the math and the money and your volatility and risk management managed the correct way. Oh, thanks, Trav. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Let's take a look at the next chart here. VXX. This is one I'm currently long in. Disclosure, I'm long this instrument uh, and many others in the inverse. I'm short the market. Most of my capital allocations are short. Here's a really good pattern called a mean reversion, and you may have seen my articles in Stocks and Commodities on that, both for both swing and day trading, where you've got a 50% retracement. Something does a big epic run up. I caught it, too, on the breakout because I've traded this for years, so I did not miss that one. Though on other instruments, I'll frequently miss the big run-up. Anyway, uh, there's a 50% pullback or 50% reversion, just a fancy way of saying a pullback or a drop to the, the average, finding support here and ultimately going up. Okay, this is a mean reversion pullback pattern. you got something that runs up, it pulls back down to half, and then bounces. Kind of like a basketball. It goes whoop, comes back down bounces, bounces, and it's long. This is the VXX, the VIX uh, ETN. One of the three that I trade. I also trade TVIX uh, and uh, UVXY. But anyway, this is a good example of... Now, this is not the kind of chart for newer traders because the point range is so extreme, right? The volatility is really... This is kind of in the deep end for sophisticated, experienced traders only. The range is 25 to 57, and it can go against you 10 points in a heartbeat. So... Again, small size on the front end is indicated, but you know I'm excited to see if this guy continues on up. If the stock market sells off, VXX will. I don't know how many of you are out there trading inverses. I trade SDS, QID, TZA, uh, QID, uh, SDS. I trade a lot of the inverse ETFs as well as the VIX ETNs because they go up when the stock market drops. But this is another pattern for the playbook is if you see something make a huge run up, or a big gap up that fades down to 50%, be on the lookout for a potential bounce, and that's called a mean reversion pivot. And that's a playbook play to be aware of. Next up, TVPT. This one illustrates my tip about large green signal candles. Kind of was a do-nothing stock. La da 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 da. Schwang. Okay, something, something, some good news that we are going to assume is good news led to price from 14.50 increase to 17. Pull back a little bit. I'm interested to see if TVPT, that's Travel Port Worldwide, is able to break out over 17. Can you always anticipate resistance near whole numbers? Right. Whether you're swing or day trading. As I teach in my live trading room, we're always looking for whole number resistance to sell into. You can always rebuy if it takes out new highs. But just like that rule of nines, it's fine to sell a 1690, right? Right under the 17 if one were uh, in this. Uh, anyway, this is a 17. We'll see if it's able to break out to new highs. But the main thing that puts it on my radar is this. It's kind of like the equivalent of a gap. As a veteran trader, I can tell you it's so important that you spend more time looking for outlier charts, especially critical in today's choppy down S&P, right? We've got relatively 
a weak stock market that's been on the decline and not doing much. Last week was a real snoozer. I don't know how many of you were looking for trades last week, but it was one of the quietest trading weeks. Uh, earlier weeks have been really volatile, which is good. Last week, not so much. It was a real quiet trading week. Uh, we expect a resurgence of volatility coming up, preferably to the downside. Uh, when you are trading that kind of market environment, it makes a lot of sense to look for these outlier charts that have exceptional strength. Because the old Wall Street saying, one of my institutional clients had told me, you know, money finds a home, right? Money's always got to find a home. And as a trader, you're always looking for ways to capitalize on breakouts when money's finding a home in the street. So, you know, one thing I hope that you get out of all this, this is Tenet Healthcare, THC. THC, Tenet Healthcare. This is an example of that same pattern. We've got a bullish cup and a wide, nice, tall signal candle that led to new highs. This one didn't have any big signal candles. <coughs> In fact, it kind of backed off resistance, but it got the gap. And the gap day, the day after the gap, the day after that gap, not so interesting. What you want to do, the technique, is to just simply draw a horizontal line at the top of the gap day and add 50 cents to that before you resolve to get in. So 22 was the high of day on the gap day in tenant healthcare back here on the 27th. Add 50 cents would have yielded a successful entry at 22.50, ran up to 25 before starting to fade. This is a nice gap continuation. Does everybody see the small window, small gap continuation? Bill's asking, where did I get the cursor from? Uh, custom, custom built, like a lot of my stuff. That's a good point, uh, Jerry, about a doji candle. Well, thanks, Richard, saying great to hear so much sensible advice. Yeah, that's what I try and get to. I'm going to boil this down you know, to you guys. I mean, i got 20 years trading experience and millions of dollars worth of stocks traded and ETFs and other instruments for that matter. And I want to give you a lot of one-liners of things that, you know, I wish if I could go back to, to coach my earlier self. My earlier unsuccessful self as a trader was looking for isolated magic chart patterns that I would bet too many hundreds of shares on, take big stops, and get into the trader's circle of doom. What's the circle of doom? That's where you take small wins and bigger stops. Then one step forward, two steps back. Then another small win, then a bigger stop. Then you get a couple of decent wins, you get all brave, you go large size, and then you get your head handed to you with another big stop. Stop the madness. There's got to be a better way. And I'm here to tell you uh, it's much more about allocating share size across a handful of five or six or ten instruments. I would a million times rather do, and I do, uh, ten trades of 100 shares each rather than one trade of 1,000 shares because I'm giving myself ten shots to get it right. And even if half of them don't work out, the ones that do work out, Hopefully I can scale into or position size into and make the numbers all work out. That's what I say, my 30% rule. you got to figure out how to make money as a trader, even if you're only right, one out of three times. And the only way that works out is by using very, very, you may think extremely tight stops, but that's really smart. Break-even stops uh, or very careful exits. A good example of that is, say, a parabolic curve or parabolic stop and I did this in both Twitter and Snapchat in my real money trading accounts so I know wherever I speak let's say let's say you're in this guy but always plan for the worst trading such a cheery profession <clears throat> well it is when you make money well, let's say <clears throat> how many times have you done this you get into the trade it looks all good then it goes bad you go oh crap it's going back down again uh, and instead of getting out of break even you say well surely it'll keep going up and surely it doesn't keep going up. And then it keeps going down. You say, oh, I can get more shares cheaper. And you buy it way down here. Next thing you know, it's down at 10 bucks a share. You lose, sell it off for a big loss. You conceal the loss from your wife. And you head, hang your head in shame. I've been there. Uh, hopefully all of you, the only way out is through, right? The trick is, the, the trading strategy is, you know, don't do that. Expect that a number of your trades will be parabolic curves where you get in on the trade. See, nobody teaches traders this stuff because a lot of those people aren't even real traders and educators. They're a bunch of chart talking morons. So the, the truth is you got to manage off your money and your PL. If I buy 22.50 and it goes up to 25, that's not enough to get me all excited and sell it because that's only a couple of points. And if I'm only in 1,500 shares, it's not enough money to make it worth my while to sell. If it ran up to, say, 28, I may lighten up a little bit to take profit. But if it's only in the beginning stages, when you're in the beginning stages of a winning trade, it's that point kind of like a deer in the headlights. You've got to make intelligent trading decisions. 
So does everybody see why I would advocate going back? If I were in this in my fidelity step or whatever, I'd be putting a sell stop limit, 2250 limit, 22 order. If I get in here and it runs up a couple of points and that's it and it comes back down, getting back out at your break even. Break even stops are especially valuable technique for traders. Does that make sense? If you agree with me, say I. I'm channeling Tony here. If you agree with me, say I or type in the letter yes or the letter Y. Break even exits are really important. So it looks good at the time, kind of famous last words. But how many of you ever had that happen where it goes up and then it, it doesn't and instead of getting out where you could have, should have, would have, you wait until it goes down or even more awful, you add to the winning trade because it's cheaper now. So stop those mistakes. I'm here to tell you, if it goes up in your favor and it comes back down to your entry, go to cash. You can always rebuy a new high. That's a professional breakout traders mantra. I can tell you it's one of the world's top breakout traders. My favorite saying in life uh, for my trading accounts is I can always rebuy a new high, but in the meantime, it's a good time to get out uh, with my skin intact. I mean, we call it a broker special because they get the commission on the end out, but uh, at least you're not taking a stop. I'm seeing all bunch of eyes. Hey, thanks, Bill, Trevor, Marvin, Anjum, Rhonda, Pete, TJ, Alf, Richard, Dave, Dave, Tim, Trev. Thanks, guys and ladies. I appreciate it. Hey, thanks. Jerry's saying this is by far the best fan hour of the day. Very, very interesting session. I wish I recorded this session, but I did take many, many screenshots of this presentation. Well, thank you, Jerry. I appreciate that, man. What sort of money management do I use? Very careful. Uh, I will initial risk on any swing trade is two points. So if I bought 2250, the biggest stop loss I would take would be 2050. That's the initial stop loss and trailing stop. The more important piece of it is to add to winning trades every two points. So let's say buy 2250. Uh, let's say it keeps going up. Let's say I'm holding off for now. I buy up again over 26. I may buy again 28 and sell it all right near 30. So that's an important thing. And yes, Rini's asking, uh, do I check the volume when there's a gap up or large range green candle? Always, you always keep an eye on volume because volume is one of the most important technical confirmation signals you'll find yourself having value for as a trader. You'll always find a large green candle on a gap. I mean, I've never seen a gap that doesn't have a large green candle, or I mean, I'm sorry, a large volume bar. So you'll always see a large volume bar. But thanks, Jerry G. I really appreciate it, man. That's uh, that means a lot. Jeff, do you see that comment? You don't have to speak out loud, but he's saying this is by far the best spin hour of the day. Well, you made my day, Jerry. Thanks, man. And I'm doing this with 101 degree fever on top of it, so thanks. I persevere. The show must go on. But yeah, always pay attention. The main thing to pay attention to for volume confirmation is not the day of the green candle or the gap, because that's always going to be large. It's going to be the reaction the day or two after to see if a new wave, does that spark a new wave of buyers? Or are they saying, oh, that's it. Nothing here to see move along and it drops. Uh, if volume continues to be reasonably high compared to the pre gap volume like this one is, it'll often lead to a gap continuation. And that's exactly what we saw here in Tenet Healthcare. I'm trying to pack 20 years of experience into a quick 60 minutes. So we got about 10 minutes left. Now's a really smart time to ask questions, hint, hint. And I will answer all questions, right? I'm here for you guys. I'm a good, honest, no BS. Uh, my biggest failure as a trader, and I'm very upfront, I'm very transparent, is I never got comfortable trading large size. That's why I'm still in vendor land and I'm still an educator because uh, leveraging my knowledge by, uh, you know, selling courses and subscriptions and all that kind of stuff uh, works out better for me than, you know, doing my small 50 and 100 share trades. My biggest trade uh, to date was 3,000 shares of MGM stock I held overnight. And fortunately, it gapped in my favor point, but not without a sleepless night. So I made three grand on the trade. That's real money trade. Uh, but uh, I couldn't sleep. And so that's my biggest and so my my lesson learned to you guys is even if you make it as a trader and you get out of losing and you get into small size and break even trades and you start making more more modest wins than anything and you start making a bit there's still no guarantee that you'll have the confidence or the comfort level i guess to trade large size so the way i do that is to allocate with a number of different positions but i for example will never be the guy who trades 10,000 shares of anything because i would just not be able to sleep if i had half a million dollars of my money on the line in a single position so my point is from a reality of trading standpoint in your progress as a trader is even if you make it out of you know you, you suck as a trader and you keep losing money to you slowly work through break even and you slowly start to make small wins incrementally over and over again there's still no guarantee that you'll get to where you're trading large size comfortably and consistently. So it is a indeed a journey. 
So I'm always completely honest about everything. It's I've earned people's trust at Trade Mastery. Anyway, we get a large green candle here at the right side of a bullish cup, right, as part of a gap. So not only we got a couple things going on, we got a large candle here. We've got that as part of a gap, which is also breaking resistance at the previous high, which led to new high breakouts. So that's good. So this is a signal to us that buyers are coming into this thing. But again, as a swing trader, never, ever, ever, you have my word on this. It took me so many years to learn this, but never, ever say buy here because I don't want to miss out if it runs up because while it's still in an uncertainty zone here, it's likely to chop and drop. So I would still wait, again, not a trade recommendation, but I would still wait until it breaks north of 2250 before I get in, right? Absolutely, positively. I'm not going to screw around with it while it's still in an uncertainty pullback zone here. Never, ever buy pullbacks and uptrends. That's the most stupid thing I've heard anyone say in the trading industry. That's a pullback and an uptrend. Yeah, well, it's a pullback and an uptrend and you get stopped out. So always trade directionally. Always trade directional volatility with careful risk management. I buy high, I sell higher. It's kind of like buying wholesale and selling retail. As a professional trader, you owe it to yourself to make money. Another quick kind of a mental coaching tip that helped me turn the corner as a trader was I wasn't able to turn the corner as a trader until I had pictures of my family on my trading station. Uh, initially, I thought it might be distracting, so I didn't do that. But when you realize that you're trading not just for yourself, but for yourself and loved ones, uh, that helps you, hopefully, if you've got any common sense, knock, 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 uh, that you're not going to take chances with the family's money, and you're only going to make smart, careful, prudent trading decisions. When you look at the picture of you know, your wife and your daughter or whatever, and you realize that it's not just for me that I do this, but it's for me and other people I care about, that can help you as a trader. At least it did help me. I didn't start turning the corner until I started having pictures of family around and realizing you're not in it to be a cowboy. You're not in it to be a gunslinger. You're not in it to be a superhero and try and take big passes at the market. You should not be trusting a lot of people that sell squiggly line crap that don't prove they trade. It's important to trade directional volatility and price action and still have a very careful risk management approach that, uh, that proves everything correct on your trade setups. Here's Crocs, C-R-O-C-S. This is a good example of the kind of chart I like for cheap charts. Uh, by cheap, I mean under 20 bucks. And by the way, don't be day trading penny stocks. I mean, really, uh, I'm not going to, don't get me started. Stocks that pop and drop. Pop and drop one hit wonders are the death of traders around the world. Oh, it's going up. So I'll go 5,000 shares long. And next thing you know, it's down a point. Oh, crap, I lost $5,000 on such a cheap stock too, derp. Uh, what you want are charts that are consistent. And you don't find that in the super cheap arena. <coughs> this is relatively cheap, as cheap as I like for most of my trades. Uh, and this guy is what? This range is from 9 to 16. So this has got a seven point trading range. Seven points on a teen price stock. Seven points, not two points, not one point, but seven points of range. That makes for a magnificent risk reward profile. It's not a super great chart, but it's a reasonably good uptrended, uptrending chart. And the main thing is, here's like the signal candle, large, big, green hawking candle. Got new buyers, okay, kind of chopped around here. Now it's in an uptrend, up, up, and away. So we'll, again, always use whole number resistance. So we anticipate that it's going to roll over or stall. If it's going to stall or do a false breakout, it'll be somewhere here between 1650 and 17. Personally, I never buy at whole numbers, so I'd wait till 1750. I don't mind waiting the extra 50 cents in exchange for potentially avoiding a false breakout. Speaking of false breakouts, how many of you have ever bought something that's going up uh, only to see it start to go down? You get stopped out and then it runs up without you. Really frustrating. How many of you have ever done that? I'm just curious. You're directionally correct, but trading wise, you still got stopped out. That's frustrating. If you want to make money as a trader, you got to use a false breakout filter approach. And again, a good rule of thumb, it's not going to be 100%, you know, nothing is, but 50 cents above a whole number high is usually a good place to not trade. So earliest I would trade this would be 1750. And that does require a bit of patience because in my old days, I don't buy six, should I be in at 1660 or 1670? Because I, I want to get every penny of the run. And then I get in and then it goes up to 17 and then collapses back down and I get stopped out. And then it runs to 20 without me just to rub salt in the wound. Really frustrating. I've made every mistake in the book. Uh, and then some, probably invented some new ones. So the, the point is you want to avoid those kind of false breakout scenarios by using a filter. And again, set your own, but I, as a general rule of thumb, I try and keep things simple. 
and straightforward and easy to understand. So I like to use 50 cents above the whole number high as a place to get out. The question from David, how do I know the trading range? Well, I just look at it and do the math. So I used to be a corporate statistician for the Ford Motor Company, and I'm, a, I'm also a nationally qualified certi certified quality engineer, so I'm a hardcore math geek. Anyway, uh, 1650 to 850, that's going to be eight points of range. So it's got eight points of range on this. That's really important. The, you know, the trade potential on this is good. So if I buy over 17, half of an eight-point range would be four points. So it may go up as high as 21, though I'm happy to get out at 20. The point is, though, the exit target should be around 50% of the high-low range on whatever time interval you're using. That's true for intraday trading as well. But yeah, really good questions. I appreciate it. Is this starting to help? I wanted to give you guys my very best. You know, like I say, it's honestly, if my life depended on me helping you become more successful as traders, this is what I've got. I want to give you guys really good patterns that make sense and understand the difference between charts to avoid and charts that are worth trading with a good eye on clean, tight-range charts. Remember an earlier strategy that I covered, and I will cover it again using this chart as the example, is if you're in a trade, la da 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 I'm in the money, yay! Show me the money, it's going up, yay, I'm in the money. But then you see two red candles, or let's say even here would have been a good place to get out. Uh, or here, a loss of two red candles support is a good place to vacate a trade. So if you get in on the breakout and you're in the money, if it loses two red, not if it just prints two red candles. Does everyone see that? Here's two red candles, but it did not lose support underneath the two red candles. Here's two red candles where it did lose support. So technically, that would be the exit would be right there. We didn't get the exact top. We didn't get the exact bottom. We got money shot in the middle here from, say, 28.50 up to around 36, which is eight sticks, eight points of range. It's Wall Street talk we call point on point is a stick. And... You go to Wall Street, market make it firm, but you got institutional guys hollering at you for uh, getting your numbers and all that kind of stuff. Uh, stick is a point. Anyway, so you get eight points. So two red candles in a row. Now, often you will not see a pivot. This is not a pivot. Dojis are not pivot signals. Hammers and bullish engulfings are, but not dojis. So this is not a pivot. I'm not a pivot trader. I would not have got this. I would not, and I didn't. I didn't trade this guy on the way up. But now it's of interest to me because... It's finally up in breakout territory. It's up at new highs, breaking high of 40. So maybe if it gets over 41.50, it may be of interest to me because it's in a continuous uptrend. My time is almost done here, grasshoppers. I hope this has been moderately outstanding. I put a lot of work into prep for you guys, and I want to give you the benefit of looking for things like wide range candles, gap continuation charts, the stuff that actually I found works out more often than not, and so much of trading. I'll, you know, I'll just wrap with a couple of thoughts here. Well, before I do, let me, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you how to keep the party started or continue on. If you want to continue on with me, how about free? That's always a good thing. You can go to my free trading week ahead. You can go to tradingweekahead.com. I, I run dozens of websites, but the easier way... You can join me and 4,900, we're actually up over 4,950 as of this morning. Uh, my Saturday Trading Week Ahead broadcast are 20 minutes long, the world's shortest and most popular webinars. There, the, they're both the shortest and the most popular webinars. We're up to almost 5,000 registered. You go to trademastery.com forward slash free. And we get together and I do a market forecast. I give you a couple of hot charts, a couple of jokes, a quote of the week. Uh, I recognize some of my members who've done an exceptionally good job in contributing in my premium events and the rest of it. But anyway, I wanted to thank you guys for being here. Let me answer any questions, too. Oh, great. Srinath is saying, great and best presentation of the day. Thank you very much. Well, thanks, Srinath. I appreciate it, man. Let's see. David's saying, great presentation. Learned a lot. Thanks. Let me know if any questions. I'm here for you guys. Hey, Jerry saying, yes, it was very, very good. R with lots of information presented. Thank you for your time. Well, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. I respect you folks. I work really hard at this. I'm a UCLA graduate, class of 86. Go Bruins. I'm already 54 freaking years old. How did that happen? Hint, if you want to watch me playing tenor saxophone, uh, I make these cool-looking green screen videos at tradingjazz.com. Not that that has anything to do with trading, but... It's, uh, if you're like me and you like classic jazz, tradingjazz.com. But the call to action, 
just just kind of a cool factor bonus plus there tradingjazz.com i've embedded a bunch of youtube videos i got thousands of views or like i'm playing pink panther but the point is join me for my weekly saturday webinars i wanted to thank the team at metastock and let's see question oh here's a question for mark why 80 cents above 16 and not 50 cents uh, because that's above the whole number so a uh, good point how important is the 50 cent levels compared to the whole number from tj uh, the main thing is avoid buying, say, 10 or 20 cents above whole numbers. Those are weak entry triggers. I like to see it get to at least the midpoint of the dollar, so that's why I use 50 cents as kind of a rule of thumb. Uh, I may get in a bit earlier or later, but in 99% of my trades, it's always looking for 50 cents above a whole number to stay clear of a false breakout. The other thing to look for is wide range charts, like I've illustrated here for you today. Question from Pete What's my opinion on SIM trading? I'm glad you asked. I think you guys have no business trading live money accounts until you can double a SIM trading account uh, because you need to get the patience and the pattern recognition skills identified. You're right, there's no psychology involved. You might want to do, say, single share, or like one share, or five share, or ten share trading to get that side of it. But then you start worrying, second guessing yourself because of the commission load uh, because it's so big compared to the share size, and then you, that turns into sloppy trader. So instead, I think it's really good to not do live money trading until you can double a SIM account. So if you start off with, say, a million dollar SIM account, take a couple of years to get it to two million before you start risking live capital. Nobody tells traders this, but it's a whole heck of a lot difficult, more difficult than it looks. And so many people blow up their accounts because they're too optimistic and they tra over trade, over leverage too much share size. They get margin calls, they trade too many hundreds of shares or contracts or lots or whatever they're trading relative to their account size and they blow up. And none of us in the trading industry want that. We all want you guys to be around for lifetime customers. So do be a fan of testing, at least, in a sim mode so that you can test out strategies. Well, thanks, Sandy. I'm saying thanks for keeping it simple. So that's my opinion on sim mode. Well, thanks, Sandy. Saying I learned a lot. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hey, you're welcome, Carol. I think we're about it. I think we're about it. Um, wow. I think you were well liked today. Well, I you're well liked by me, so thanks, Jeff, so much. <laughs> no problem. Thanks for coming in. Uh, Appreciate it, man. Do you have any final thoughts about the market ahead? Uh, uh, Rhonda's asking. I'm curious to see your answer to this one. I think it's going down, so I'm short the market. But I, just small size initially. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm not really optimistic about some recovery rally. The biggest challenge is going to be holding through really sleepy weeks, like last week was a real snoozer. So. Uh, holding through steady consolidation. The main thing to look for is, does this S&P lose the 200 simple moving average line on a 90-day candlestick chart and stay under it? And if it does, start to watch out below. And then you'll see a death cross of the 50 SMA cross the 200. So <coughs> I'm bearish. All right. Uh, Ken, thank you for your time today. Uh, let's see. So if you, uh, if you guys want to sign up for those free weekly Saturday webinars, trademastery.com slash free. Uh, is uh, where you go for that. And uh, good job today, Ken. Uh, I'm glad we were able to get you on after a little bit of stress. Oh, you're my hero. You you saved the day. Uh, I'm technically <laughs> adept, but you you fixed it. So thanks so much, Jeff Gibby. He's a great guy to work with and certainly the kind of person we need more of in the trading industry. So thanks, Jeff, for having me here. I sincerely appreciate it. And I appreciate all of the traders for being here today as well. All right. Very good. We'll see you at the next one. Uh, thanks, Ken. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. All right. Uh, I have some.